Okay, now we're on to the rest of the content that we're covering today. So first of all is integrated marketing communications strategies. So IMC is the acronym here. Now this is, as the name suggests, a unified promotional method. And it's going to involve a range of different communication platforms. They're all joining together and working together to support each other. That's this whole idea of integrated is that it's all together and in support of one another. It's a long-term and customer-centric marketing approach. And it's all, all about consistency and optimizing the influence that the communication has in terms of getting the results that the business is looking for. So we've got a whole bunch of examples here. So you can use any number of these as part of an integrated marketing communication strategy. Mobile marketing, emerging avenues like AI is a huge one. Print media and direct mail is more traditional. You've got public relations, and sales promotion, social media, web ads and search engines and lots more as well. Now, four IMC strategies that we're going to look at include recognition, relevance, reward, and relationship. So the four R's. Before we get into looking at each of those in turn, though, let's have a look at an example of a business that's used a IMC strategy effectively. So Coca-Cola, in this case, they have the Share a Coke campaign, and this involved using multiple digital and traditional channels that all supported one another as part of the campaign. So TV commercials, and then also social media, cinema, outdoor, and experiential activation as well. So not only online, not only on TV, but also physical as well. So cinema, outdoor, and actual activations as well to get people involved. And they allowed people to create personalized cans at Coca-Cola kiosks. And so that is another idea of having that physical presence as well. And they allowed them to gift a personalized virtual Coca-Cola can through social media. So this is creating this idea of accessibility. You've got an offering for people who can make it to these physical places where they can create a personalized can. You're also appealing to those who aren't able to attend places like that but who are adept with things like social media. They're allowing for personalization, so it's appealing to people in that way. Using people's names is something that is going to make people feel a bit closer to the brand and the campaign. So they also had consistent brand elements. So even though you've got all of these different things that are happening as part of the campaign, all of these strategies and communication platforms that are being used, the whole idea is it still needs to be integrated. It still needs to support each other and that calls for that level of consistency. So you can tell that, of course, it's Coke, so it's going to have the red theme throughout. It's going to have the same typography, the same logos. All of those different elements remain consistent. And also another consistent element is that call to action. So share a Coke in this case was the main message and it was the focal point of all of the communication regardless of the media channel that was used. So you've got that consistent branding. So you've got the recognition factor and then you've got the consistent call to action. So People can engage with the campaign in multiple ways and then they have that repetition. In order for people to change their behavior or be persuaded of something, a really key thing is always repetition. 
So that is why having that consistent messaging across channels is really important for IMC and just for marketing and public relations in general as well. So let's have a look at each of the four strategies for IMC. First of all is recognition. Now this I touched on there with recognizing the brand of Coca-Cola. So consumers want to be familiar with the business's values and then also be able to actually distinguish the business's products from competitors. That is where having that branding and that consistency comes through with, with logos and colors and things like that. And the idea of a USP or a unique selling proposition is strongly connected to that idea of recognition because people can dis distinguish between different businesses based on what is unique about them. So having that unique element is important. And loyalty schemes can be implemented for regular customers to recognize their allegiance to the business as well. In terms of relevance, it's important that whatever you're saying is actually relevant to who you're saying it to. If you provide information to consumers that is not relevant to them, then they're going to be motivated to actually delete those emails or ignore them altogether, send them to spam, not engage with any of the different platforms that you may be using. So I'm sure most of us are familiar with that idea of receiving all sorts of emails that we don't want and listing it as spam or deleting it without reading it, those sorts of things. So this is tying in with this idea of relevance. And companies need to identify their target market's needs and wants and strive to fulfill those needs and wants in order to maintain that relevance. So consumers need to understand why they need to know the message, why they should read it or engage with it. And that is going to give the business a competitive edge because it's going to reduce the risk that customers are going to go and seek alternatives from competitors. If you can maintain consumer engagement with your brand, then they're more likely to buy from you in the future. In terms of reward, this one is pretty self-explanatory. So consumers need to get some kind of benefit from engaging with the business's messages. And this can be tangible or intangible. So rewards can be that tangible idea in terms of things like gift cards and vouchers. Or you could have entertainment or education gained from the communication as well. That's more of an intangible thing. Um, because it's that sort of, that benefit that they're getting that isn't a, isn't just a monetary thing, it's a skill thing or an enjoyment thing. And it's important that every piece of communication is going to present some kind of reward, because otherwise you're going to lose engagement with the communication that you're using. So for example, on social media, we don't just see constant promotion of things without some kind of incentive for us to be looking at it or engaging with it. So different companies are going to hold free giveaways or they're going to have discounts if you subscribe to something or if you like something or comment or things like that. So you're asking for engagement with your messages and in return, you're presenting some kind of reward as well. And relationship is the last one. And this is all about having that rapport between a business and its consumers. 
And this is about maintaining the communication in order to have that relationship. If you don't communicate regularly, then the consumer isn't going to feel very close to you. They're not going to feel like they have much of a reason to stay loyal to you. So having that balance between regularity and, I guess, spam kind of messages. You don't want things to be too regular in terms of your messaging because oftentimes that will result in people unsubscribing or ignoring because you're going overboard with the messaging. But irregular communication is also the flip side of that where you're you're not making enough of an effort to engage with those consumers.